Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Menace Forum Elite Mini UM870 Slim. Now what makes this thing special is the price point here, especially for a bare bones unit, and the fact that this is using an APU that we have not tested on the channel, believe it or not. I mean, we go through a lot of these mini PCs. In fact, originally this APU was only released in China. Now, taking a look at the overall unit, I mean, we've got a small form factor unit here from Minus Forum. I do love the color here. Usually when we see these Ryzen mini PCs from them, they are in that black color variation. Kind of nice to see a really clean silver version. And yeah, I mean, it's definitely a very clean design. Inside of the box, obviously, we're going to get the mini PC itself. In this case, it's that Elite Mini UM870 Slim. We also get a mounting bracket so we can put this on the back of a monitor, under a desk, on a wall. 6 foot HDMI cable, small form factor 120 watt power supply, and we do get some extra rubber feet for the bottom. In case we want to get in here, we will have to take those off and they are stuck to the bottom. I actually didn't run into any issues with them going back on when uh, taking this thing apart, but they send a couple just in case. When it comes to I.O. on this PC, up front here we get a 3.5mm audio jack, two full-size USB 3.2 Type-A ports, and of course we've got our power button over here. On the sides, not much going on, but there's a lot of ventilation for the cooling system, and that's something I want to talk about, because this is definitely one of the quietest mini PCs with the wattage we're running at here. We'll take a look at all of that in just a bit, but around back, we've got our power input, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, full-size HDMI, full-size DisplayPort 1.4, full-function USB 4, and this is running at a 40 gig protocol, and two full-size USB 2.0 ports. Getting in here is pretty easy, and this thing does support up to 96 gigabytes of SODEM DDR5 at 5600. We've got the M.2 cooler with a built-in fan here. I've just unplugged it from the bottom. And something new that I've seen here, Minisform usually uses a 2280 right out of the box, but it looks like we've got a 2242 here with an adapter. This is a one terabyte drive that came in here. This isn't the bare bones unit. And my guess is it was just a little cheaper to do something like this. It is a Kingston branded drive and we've got crucial RAM. We can add up to four terabytes of M.2 storage here with both of those M.2 slots. And when it comes to the cooling system here, it's a phase change design and they use a large diameter fan. It's actually got a nice copper heat sink over here, but with that larger diameter fan, it doesn't have to spin up as much to move as much air as a smaller fan spinning at a higher RPM, which makes this thing stay nice and quiet. In fact, under 35 decibels, even at a 65 watt TDP. And by the end of the video, we'll take a look at overall temps through all of my testing. But I can tell you right now, this thing stays cool and quiet the whole time I was using this unit. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, they opted to use the AMD Ryzen 7 8745H. This was a China-only APU for some time, and with this, we do get 8 cores, 16 threads, and a clock up to 4.9 GHz. It also uses the Radeon 780Mi GPU, and this is based on RDNA 3. It's got 12 compute units, and it only clocks up to 2600 MHz as opposed to the HS version up to 27, but I really haven't noticed the difference with that 100 MHz difference there. You can add up to 96 gigabytes of DDR5 at 5600 here in dual channel. We've got two M.2 2280 slots, Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth, and I'm going to be running Windows 11 on this machine, but since it's an x86 platform, you could always install Linux if you want to. Getting right down to it, the first thing I wanted to take a look at was the BIOS, and it is using the Minus Forum Visual BIOS. We'll head to Setup, Advanced, and there's possibly a few things we're going to change here. Uh, CPU configuration, sometimes we do have like a power profile, it doesn't look like we do with this one. So let's move down to AMD CVS. NBIO, this is where we can access the iGPU settings from GFX configuration. And out of the box, it's set to 2 gigs. Since we've got a 32 gig unit, we'll just take it up to 8 with this system. 3, 4, up to 8, depending on what kind of RAM you got. If you got 16, I usually go with 4 gigs just dedicated, but it will allocate more as it needs it. Moving back, SMU common options, system configuration. It's set to auto, but we can go up to 54. I think I'm gonna leave it in auto mode right now and just see what it does. If it came down to it, you could adjust the smart shift control, manual, APU only limit, and our sustain power limit. Again, we're going with auto, and I think this will at least go up to 54, even though the system configuration is set to auto. But there's one last thing here, hardware monitor. Oh, there's no way to adjust the fan curve from here. So basically, only thing we did here was set that VRAM amount. 
We're going to save, exit, get right into Windows. And here we are. As you can see, we've got that AMD Ryzen 7 8745H. And like I mentioned, this is basically like the HS version without the MPU. Not listed here, as you can see. AMD could cut some costs with this. And obviously, there's a lot of people out there that aren't really going to utilize the NPU in something like this. But we've got 8 cores, 16 threads, 32 gigs of DDR5, up to 5600 here. And of course, the Radeon 780mi GPU, and we did go into the BIOS, take it up to 8 gigs. We left everything in auto mode for that CPU configuration. And from here, we can actually take a look at what kind of TDP this is running at. This is with no adjustment from third-party applications. We'll stress this out. Right down here with hardware info, up to 64, 65 watts. And I've seen it kind of just stay there. So we've got a sustained 64 watt TDP with this chip, which is plenty for this. But given the cooling system that Menace Forum usually uses with these mini PCs, we could probably take this up and be fine. But I think what we're going to do here is leave it in that stock configuration, and we'll see how it works from there. Moving over to some benchmarks. First one here is Geekbench 6 and single core coming in with the 2,603, multi 13,153. Not bad for a Ryzen 8000 chip, but as we know, AMD has released the Ryzen AI HX series, like the HX370, and Minisform did recently release a mini PC with this chip, and performance is awesome, but the price point on those is pretty high. And with that, we're looking at a single core of 2,939, multi 15,707. So it is a good uplift over single and multi, but then again, the HX370 does have 12 cores and 24 threads, as opposed to this chip's 8 cores and 16 threads. But where the real uplift comes is on the new iGPU, the 890M. On the system here with the Ryzen 7 8745H with those Radeon 780M graphics and 3D Mark Time Spy, we're scoring around a 3320. Not too bad given that we're working with 5600MHz SODIMM RAM. But on that new Ryzen AI 9 with the Radeon 890M iGPU, we're up to 4181. Now the price difference here really doesn't make too much sense because most of the HX370 mini PCs on the market are anywhere from $900 to $1,200, as opposed to one of these coming in bare bones, coming in at $344. Even if you added 64 gigs of RAM and 4 terabytes of storage, you're not going to match the price of that HX370. So in the end, it's really going to be up to you. But now, I want to move into some real-world gaming and see how this thing performs. And the first one we have here is Red Dead Redemption 1. This is the recent PC port. Been having a lot of fun with it. A little overpriced. Hopefully it goes on a really deep discount. It would be worth picking up then. But right now we're at 1080 medium with FSR set to balanced. And we're seeing an average of around 75 FPS. Not too bad and it's fully playable like this. Next up, we've got Overwatch 2, 1080p, medium. We don't need any kind of scaling with this, and I'm pretty sure we could lock this down at 60 and run it at high. But with it set up like this, we can actually get an average of 123 FPS, and every once in a while it dips under that 120 mark. Lots of characters on screen right now. You can see it's doing a pretty decent job. And if you take a look at Afterburner, we're only drawing around 60 watts from that APU. Here's Ratchet & Clank ripped apart 1080 medium with FSR set to balance. With the recent updates to this game, I've been seeing a really nice jump in performance with no FSR frame gen. Now if you wanted to enable it here, you can average around 130 FPS with these same settings using the built-in FSR 3.1 frame gen that Nixus added. Here's Fortnite. I personally don't play it, but I know there's a lot of people out there that want to see performance of this game. Right now we're at 1080 medium with no scaling, and it's doing way better than I thought it would. Sometimes I'll jump into this game on an iGPU very similar to this little system here, and it's just all over the place. It's one that's a bit hit or miss, but with this we did get an average of 91 FPS. Checking out Forza Horizon 5, definitely an easier one to run on these iGPUs, but it's my favorite arcade racer, so I always like testing it out. 
1080p, no FSR, no CAS, we got an average of 82 FPS. And the final game I wanted to test out here was God of War Ragnarok, where at 1080p with a low medium mix and FSR 3.1 frame generation on from the game settings. If I take it to medium, we do get some dips, I mean really close to going under. So I did kind of a mix there, it's about an even mix of medium and low settings. Still looks good like this, but the FSR frame gen is really your best friend with a game like this on this iGPU. It really does take that frame rate way up because without it, we'd be seeing an average of around 48 FPS. The last thing I wanted to talk about here were CPU temps on this machine. And remember, we're at a 54 watt TDP. We haven't changed anything. So we're using that stock fan curve. And average gaming, up to around 72 degrees Celsius, Maximum temperature I saw was 81 and it just peaked out there for a second, came right back down. This thing is really quiet. They do state 35 decibels over on their website. And I could definitely believe this. I mean, even through all of my testing here, this thing remained very, very quiet. Another thing I always like to monitor while testing these mini PCs is total system power consumption from the wall. So while doing my testing, I've got this plugged into a kilowatt meter and at idle, it's pulling 13 watts. Average 1080 gaming up to 72 watts and the peak here was 87 watts in total from the wall. From the BIOS with that system configuration we can go as low as I think it was 25 watts there so we could draw a lot less but you're not going to see the kind of performance that this thing was putting out in this video. But overall this is definitely a solid little system and coming in at 344 bare bones you will need to add your own ram and storage it's not a bad deal for what we're getting here so if you're interested in learning a little more i will leave links in the description to menace forums website and if there's anything else you want to see running on this be it more games a different operating system let's say linux here let me know in the comments below but that's going to wrap it up for this video and like always thanks for watching